Welcome to another Through the Bible. Today we're doing the book of 1 Thessalonians. Woo! First Thessalonians is which journey did Paul meet the Thessalonians in? First, who raised your hand if you think it's the first? One. Raise your hand if you think it's the second. I have no idea. I'm One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at Reggie, nine. Raise your hand if you think it's the third. One, two, three, four. You're dead. You can't vote all three times. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, second is correct. Yeah, but I said, when did he meet them? Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Where'd my papers go? Uh, so yeah, first meeting. Good job. He noticed that... Uh, that he went there in his third too. But um, first missionary journey. Uh, you think he spent a long time there like in Ephesus or a short time? Media. Shh. Not an option. Not an option. <laughs> Who thinks it was a long time? For what? One, two, three, four, five. Who thinks it? There's six, seven. Who thinks it was a short time? <laughs> short time's correct. <laughs> If you look at Acts 17, you'll find the story of Paul in Thessalonica, which is the name of the city. Uh, Thessalonica, if you have your map, you can see where he, where he visited it. Um, it's in what country? What modern day country? Greece. Okay. Well, Greece is an ancient country too. I don't know exactly where the borders were then. But yeah, um, it was all taken over by Rome. Acts 17, 1, you see the heading there, in Thessalonica. So, Paul and Silas, right? Yeah, Paul and Silas visit there. Um, they, they don't have a very good, well, they first they have a good time. They go to the synagogue. They, it says, three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. So this is Paul's normal MO when he comes to a new city. He first starts What's with MO mode of operation. What's that? Oh. Method, method. method of operation? Yeah. Addy. Um, so he goes to the synagogue, which is where the Jews meet, and he, from the Old Testament, shows that Jesus fulfilled Old Testament prophecy and that he is the Messiah, and he encourages them to believe in Jesus um, as, their, as their Messiah. So some of the Jews believe. And then after he gathers some Jewish followers, that, um, he starts to talk to Greek, which Gentile, Gentile people as well, the people who are non-Jewish. But usually he starts by going to the synagogue and preaching to the Jews because they already have a foundation of understanding who Jesus was because they understand the Old Testament. Usually when he talks to Gentile they, have, they maybe have a pagan religion, like Greek gods or Roman gods, or they have, believe something else. They don't necessarily have a biblical foundation, but he introduces them too. So, uh, verse 4 says, Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and, a, and not a few prominent women. So there's actually like high up, maybe Roman official, maybe Roman leadership senator type, or, or um, like centurion wives um, that, that were there that also become believers, which is, which is significant. But, um, so, the, so there's more Greeks than Jews. And then, um, then the Jews that didn't believe get really jealous. And they, it says they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, what? formed a mob, and oh, started a familiar. riot in the this city. It sounds like Jesus is crucifixion. Let's round up some guys and tell them to... Yeah. So the Jews that were upset that Paul had come in and converted some Jews and were preaching a different story than what they believed um, were upset. And so then they rushed to Jason's house. So Jason, we don't know much about him, but he was the host of Paul and Silas when he went there to Thessalonica. We get some cool details here. They're looking for Paul and Silas to bring them out into the crowd but they could not find him. So they dragged Jason and some of the other brothers before this, the city officials. Yes. Jason. Anyone know Jason? Yeah. Yeah. I know someone named Jason. Biblical name. Um, and here's what they say about Paul and Silas. Listen to this. Um, we're in verse 
eight, six now, halfway oh, through. One. Yeah, no, chapter 17 of Acts. Oh, Acts. Okay. <laughs> These men have caused trouble all over the world and now come here. And Jason welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying there's another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd officials, the crowd and city officials were thrown into a turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. So, so they had to, like a bail, like bond. Um, they had to, to get, you had to put a deposit down to leave jail. Um, so he makes them pay. So this, this turns out that the whole, there's a lot of, like a mob crowd of people against Paul and Silas, and even the city officials are like now looking for Paul and Silas. Um, they're hiding, but they escape through the night. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. So Paul doesn't get much time in Thessalonica, but he does establish a church there. So um, why I bring all this up, it's not just to know about Thessalonica, but it's cool. This letter came really quickly when Paul was in Corinth. So, so right away, so he goes through Berea and Athens and then Corinth, okay? So that by Acts 18, he's in Corinth. Then he writes a letter to Thessalonica. So this is how quick the letter came because Paul wasn't able to spend much time there. He feels like he needs to send him a letter. So, so you said it's in Acts 18 that we see that he writes the letter? No, we see... It's just in between. That's where he wrote the letter from. So you see how quickly it came. So Paul wrote this letter to a young church in Thessalonica um, in 51 AD from Corinth. And this is either his earliest or one of his earliest letters. Um, so kind of cool. This is like version one of Paul's letters, um, and it's it's the oldest and, and earliest. Is there a spot we could find where all of the letters to the churches are in chronological order. We could we could. It would be interesting to read them in order to see what he was dealing with with the early church. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would be cool. Let me get a chronological list of Bibles I want. And the kind of the circumstances of this letter is Tim, Paul sent Timothy to check in on the Corinthian church. I don't think Timothy was part of that original, like he wasn't in trouble like Paul and Silas were. So he sends a spy almost. <laughs> but he sends a guy, Timothy, who wouldn't get in trouble like Paul and Silas would if they went back um, to check in on the church. This, and is, then, this is the one he sent someone? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he has sent. Timothy comes back and then Paul writes this letter. So it's based on Timothy's report of how the church in Thessalonica is doing. Um, this letter is mostly encouragement. Um, again, this young church, um, there is some instruction. They have, their, probably their biggest confusion is about the return of Jesus, which, uh, join the club. Anybody else confused about the, the return of Jesus? Does anybody know when Jesus is coming back? No. Soon. 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 Um, <laughs> You know, there's lots, there's lots of different, there's lots of What's different. What's the only thing that Jesus doesn't know? When he's coming back. When he's coming back, Jesus knows everything except for when he's coming back. Can you guys smile, everyone? It's time to be real, guys. This is more important than Jesus. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so mature. You're sharing okay, the I'm, love of God's like, word with your be, be like, real friends. Like a Christian trivia, like what's the only thing Jesus doesn't know? He knows everything. Um, I didn't even know that. So, anyway, so the, the Thessalonians, like a lot of people, are confused about the resur- Jesus' return, not the resurrection, Jesus' return. And what, is their, what do you think their confusion is about? What do you think their main question is? Is he going to be a warrior? Is he going to be a warrior? No. Do I bury the dead? When? Yeah, sort of when, because they're expecting him, what's that word again? Soon. Soon. Oh, so they're not doing much. They're kind of no, they're most worried about their friends who have died. And they're like, wait a second, Jesus has come back yet, and this guy died. Like, what's going to happen to him? So Paul is helping them understand about the resurrect or about the return. Like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. No, um, he's not talking about the timeline. He's more talking about um, those who have died already. Um, this is in chapter four, thirteen. Um, this this is a cool verse. I've read this verse at a funeral before. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Because um, wh- why do we grieve differently as Christians? Because we have hope. We have hope. We know where our, our friend who died has gone. 
um, if they're a Christian. In verse 14, this is 414. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. So we believe God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. So they're, you know, they're expecting Jesus to come back soon, anytime. They're like, our friends have died. What happens to them? They're like, what? Jesus is coming back, but they're dead. And so he's saying, if you're still alive at the, and when Jesus comes back, you're not going to be ahead of a line of the people who have died. Um, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we, so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. This is probably one of the most distinct places where we talk about what? What do we call this event? The rapture, exactly. Um, so this is God, Jesus coming back, calling the believers, actually the dead in Christ, so, th- so their souls like in heaven, but their bodies raised and, and the resurrection happens of their bodies. Um, they get their glorified body like Jesus had, that's what we think. And the, the people who are alive get called, we meet them to meet together in the air with Jesus at this loud trumpet call of God. This is the event we call the rapture. Now, it's in Thessalonians, so it's not like in any type of timeline, so we do struggle to place this. Where do we place this in Revelation or at the end? Um, is just Jesus, is there a call for Christians and then he comes again? Um, like our church, there's, so there's, you have probably have friends at different churches who would place this at different times. There's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, right? Seven years of tribulation. Um, like our church would generally be pre-trib, right? So it, it happens and kind of, we think that starts the tribulation. Uh, if you've read the Left Behind book, that's where they put it. It kind of sets everything in motion, which you can imagine uh, every Christian disappearing would kind of be a worldwide crazy event that would set some craziness in motion. So that'd be convenient. It would be so sad because the world would have, like, God's presence would be very yeah. little. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Um, Anyway, so this is just, this is literally to ask their, answer their question, what happens to our friends that have already died? And Jesus hasn't come back yet. But you can see that they're, they're how many, what year is it? 51. When did Jesus die and resurrect? Like 30. 30 something. So, um, you know, this is only 20 years after Jesus. So you could, the time they're in, and Jesus says, I'm coming back soon, right? They're expecting soon. They're expecting in their lifetime, and they're confused by their friends who have died. Okay, so Paul answers that question. Um, Otherwise, he's writing this letter to strengthen the Thessalonian church and their faith, give them assurance of Christ's return. Um, And he just, it's kind of like instructions. It's encourage. Like, even he's encouraging them because they have, what, what do you think it's been like for them as Christians in Thessalonica with how they reacted to Paul and Silas? Easy? Challenging? What do you think? What's your question? How has it been, do you think, for the Thessalonian church to be a church in Thessalonica, knowing what we know what happened to Paul and Silas? Challenging. Challenging. They've they've experienced persecution. They've experienced trouble. There's, especially the Jewish remnant are like, hey, you can't talk about the Bible this way. Like, that's not the Messiah that we believe in. Like, there's people who are opposed to this. They've gotten the government and city officials against them. They've been arresting Christians, right? Like, so that means Jason, the, one of the leaders of the church, um, had to, you know, have a trial and, and get in trouble for, like, hosting these troublemakers. And then they're probably trying to get him to, like, denounce this, this teaching and stuff like that because they see it as a threat. The Jews set it up. Do you think the Jews are big fans of Rome? And they're like, you shouldn't talk bad about Caesar. No, they, they totally set them up, like, Hey, they're trying to get them in trouble, like the Jews, like the Jerusalem Council did to Jesus, right? They're trying to get the Romans to get Jesus in trouble. They're trying to make a, an argument. So they did the same thing with the Roman letter, leaders. They're like, they're, they're saying Caesar's not the king, that Jesus is the king. But they're trying to like stir it up to make them get in trouble. They think that, oh, these are like going to start an uprising, right? <laughs> so they have set the leaders against them. But there's also prominent women... Um, in the 
that are part of the church, which is, which is cool. So that's the dynamics of this church. He's trying to encourage them. One of my favorite verses is in here, which I want to want to hit. Um, it's in four, so it's right before what I was reading about the coming of the Lord. Four eleven. This is great. Oh, there's okay. Here's some encouragement in four nine. Now about brotherly love, we don't need to write you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And, and in fact, you do love all the beloved brothers throughout Macedonia. Yeah, we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. So th- th- they're doing well with, with their love for each other as a church. It sounds like a loving, awesome place. But he's encouraging them in their love. And now this verse 11, I really like. This is a good verse of like, how do we live our lives here in this earth? Um, waiting for Jesus to come back. What, what is our MO? Method of operation. Make it your ambition. No. Mitch, Abby, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. That's kind of like how we should live. This is like, like why, why do we, you know, Jessica and I have talked about this. Like, why do we save for retirement? Shouldn't we just depend on god like he'll provide like like this teaches us that we shouldn't we should be wise with what god has given us yes we should be dependent on god for everything but being wise so that we're not dependent on anyone like we don't we just if we can live like we just like ah someone else will pay my bills like ah, the church you know they have a benevolent fund i don't need to save any money um but we should live a life that we can support and help others when they have needs like there may be times you have needs but you shouldn't make it your goal to have needs right you should live a life. You should work hard. You shouldn't just be lazy because God's going to take care of everything. Um, and then you should, your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. What does that mean? We're being ambassadors for Christ, seeking to set his example. Yeah. So what kind of, we're, we're representing Christ as an example to outsiders. What kind of life would other people kind of understand and respect? Kind of like a hardworking, good, peaceful, contributing life, right? Like we think about people who are good for the community. They contribute, they help, they're, they're positive people, they're peaceful people, right? Like that's the type of people we should be. And so that we're a good witness, a good representation to outsiders too. We, we shouldn't just like form our own community up in the woods somewhere and just hide from, every, from the outsiders because they're scary, like, we need to live in, in the communities and, and be good representatives and be involved in the communities and win people by living a good, contributing daily life. Be part of life. Quiet life. Mind your own business. Work with your hands. I feel like that's a great one. Mind your own business. <laughs> so, you know, we're not being meddlers. We're not, you know, stirring up trouble. We're not, you know, doing, being a crazy person. We need... we. Brian, you were a little crazy in high school. Yeah, probably. But I mellowed out. Okay, so this is the letter to the Thessalonians. It's a great letter. Um, next, we're going to watch the... Th- what's in the Bible? Bible no, Project. The Bible Project video. Um, I took their exact outline. So Jessica's going to write the outline from the video um, that has... It's kind of cemented by three main prayers. There's... Um, there's a thanksgiving prayer, a prayer for endurance, and a prayer of hope. So those are in the notes. And then it, then kind of the topics as you're out. But the main category is a celebration of faithfulness. In the beginning, he's thankful for them. He's celebrating their thankfulness. And he's challenging them to grow in the second half of the letter. So that's kind of how it's outlined with those prayers in it. Is Jesus in this book? Yes. How? They talk about the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord. Jesus we will back. meet him in the air. He is an avenger. Uh, is in the What's that verse, Eddie? He is not an avenger. Uh, he avenges us. us. What does your translation say? Um, that no one transgresses and wrongs his brother in this matter because the Lord is an avenger in all these things. As we told you beforehand, it's commonly warned you. NIV does not say avenger. It says the Lord will punish men for all sins. Nice. ESV. 
Jesus is one Jesus of the is, events. Jesus, Jesus is basically Thor. He's basically Thor. He's Thor. Because he's Thor the, the son of so Odin. He gets, no, he gets their lightning back from the sky. And he can, like, he's back. Odin's son. Who Odin's Odin? like... Odin is like the all-father. Oh, I haven't, I haven't watched him. Odin. Yes. We're stretching it. If we if we had to pick one, you're you're correct. It would be most like Thor. No, Captain America. Captain America. Well, it's like Zeus and uh, what's Zeus's Jesus son? Is a part of the MCU. Uh, Hercules, Hercules is that one? No. No. Yeah. yeah. Jesus is like the Greek gods. Yeah. What? Yes. And his son is Hercules. And his son is Hercules. And the. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. Key verse. Key verse. I picked 414. Like, if there's one issue that that Paul is trying to correct with them, he's trying to explain to them this concept that Jesus died and rose again. But it's also like the gospel is super in there, so it's it's important. And it's like our hope. It's where our hope is found is that Jesus is coming back, Jesus will right all the wrongs, Jesus will, will rise the dead, um, and we'll get to be with him in the air. Um, so, like, that's, that's kind of a key verse to me. You could have others. I mean, the verse about lead a quiet life, like, that could be a key verse of, like, how do we live in this place? Um, I don't know, it could be others, but that, I think that's a good one, 414, as a key verse. Really, like, if, um, if you imagine... Timothy coming back with his report to, to Paul. He's like, yeah, they're doing good. There's lots of persecution, but they're, they're, but they're, but they're being strong. They're, they're loving each other, right? They have brotherly love for each other. They're, they're living in this community. They're growing, um, but they're confused about their friends who have died. Like, what's going to happen to them if Jesus comes back, right? So this is that's like kind of the reason, like, oh, Paul's like reacting. I got to explain this to them. But there's a lot of encouragement. But that's like the one thing, right? That he's trying to fix their theology on. Timeless truth. I had a bunch. Yeah, for real. So I don't know. Mm. Like, we'll vote. Let's vote after we fill them in. Vote. Okay, live a blank cultural way of life. God. No. Oh, God. Jesus. Counter. Oh, someone got it. Live a counter cultural way of life. I loved how the video. Um, equated living counterculturally with living holy. What does holy mean? Set apart. Set apart. And what, is, what does it mean to be countercultural? Different. Different. Different, right? Different. So it's counter to culture. Cultural, culture is like the norm, right? We talk about pop culture. Pop culture. That's popular culture. What's popular, what's, uh, you know, if we, were talk, if we were to talk about pop culture right now, what would we talk about? Uh, Taylor, no. Swift Taylor Swift and Kelsey football. Oh, man. I, know, I don't know. Football season's over. It's not going to be good. We, we would talk about the current day, the current age, what everybody's into, what everyone's talking about. Did you hear Beyonce made a country album? I don't know. Something like that. Right? And so we're called to live countercultural lives. We're not... Well, culture says right now, like, you can be whatever gender. You yeah. can switch genders. And so we are living among culture, Right? We're not called to be separate from culture, but we're, we're, ca- we're called to be holy in culture, which is set apart, which is different. So countercultural. So there are things, there's sometimes we can, like, did we watch the Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah we did. Is there anything wrong with that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Maybe, um, but like, there's some things, parts of culture that we can we can be we can be a part of or we can attend. But there's other things in culture that we need to be counter to, right? The sin, immorality, uh, wrongs, injustices. We need to be counter cultural to. So th- we're living this holy, set apart life where we're within culture, like like it's describing us living quiet and peaceful lives among people, so that we can be a witness. But we're also supposed to be holy and countercultural. Yes. Paul also knew the culture of the surrounding people very well, so he was able to like respond to it. Yeah. In his letters specifically. Right. He's calling them to be different, especially sexually, which was which was a big thing that they were dealing with. Um, 
So, like, he's calling them, you know, to live holy, set apart, countercultural lives. That's one of my timeless truths. All right. Live with Jesus. Nope, it's not Jesus. Live with uh, love. 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 Um, live with love. Two live for two, Trevor. Trevor is nailing it today. Um, another one. Live in grace. Peace. Thinking Peace. about that oh. that key verse there. Who's what did someone say? Oh, oh. Live in grace. Thinking about that that key verse there. Who's what did someone say? Oh. oh, you know what? I have reassurance. Okay, the the bottom one is live in peace, shalom. Shalom is what? What does that mean? It's, it's our best word for We're it is peace, like but it's a truly holistic, it's also a greeting in, in it's Hebrew, yeah. and it's a, it's a more of like well-being for, like if I wish you shalom, it's more than peace, we think of peace as just like not war, not conflict, but peace, shalom is like well-being, if I wish Henry shalom, I wish him to do well in his classes and to be successful in his business. And to for his family relationships and his all his relationships and friendships to flourish, like it's more than just peace. Is what is what Shalom wishes. But what's the, what's the middle one? There's one more that I thought of. Live in grace. No. Oh, absolutely. Live in hope. So the hope that Jesus is coming back is also a state that we should be living in. So I don't know. Well, I want to see both. You can only vote for one. Okay? Who, who? So we have four possible timeless so one, truths. one, two, three, or four. Countercultural. I think there's one more we need to add. Well, okay. Well, Andrew wants to add a fifth. What do you think, Andrew? I think endure persecution was a big one. Okay. Yes. We didn't talk about that one as much, but it is. Endure suffering, endure persecution. Um, I mean, we could put that in their countercultural way of life. Like, they're not just following the norm, so they're enduring persecution. I also want to endure suffering for Christ because I don't want you to suffer for sin, okay? Good point. All right, so now there's five. All right, so you got to think about, you want countercultural way of living with love, live with hope, live in peace. Who number three? Live in hope. Yes. One, two. All right. It's who vague. Specifically, it's hope of Christ's return, because that's what oh, he's talking okay. about, right? Who votes, we oh, do we not mourn as those without hope. Live in peace alone. One, two, three, four, five. We're doing so much voting today. Live with love. We're so democratic. <laughs> One, two. Hey, did you vote twice? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay, two. Who votes uh, live a countercultural way of life? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who are disrupt the system? Okay, who's voting endure suffering for Christ? Andrew, vote. You didn't even vote for your own. Colton voted again. I just wrote the Well, that's that's the book of First Thessalonians. Thank you. Hey. Challenge you, it's only five chapters. Read it this week. You've got five days. Read the whole book of First Thessalonians. Read the book. The letter.